No. I think at this point we have to just say that there are different periods of in architecture when different things were fashionable. Just like uh, corsets were fashionable in women's clothing for a period of time. Now the corsets weren't fashionable because women wanted just simply to look thinner. They also wanted to get the striking lines that the tightly seamed and basted dresses with these little uh, darts and pleats or whatever. I'm not a fabric person. Um, but the, the corset allowed for a woman's body to have a little bit different shape to it than it did before. And so they could more tightly tailor the dress. And so they could make the, a dress or a jacket or whatever look different than before. So in a sense, to the the different fashions in architecture. Some of the fashions are are brilliant mo moments when someone comes up with a way to make a piece of glass that's ten times larger than any piece of glass you ever saw before. And all of a sudden, you don't have to have windows with tiny little quarrels in them because you can't get glass very big. You can make larger windows. At which point, they don't just take the same humble little house with the hand riven clapboards and, and put big windows in it. They actually make a different kind of house. They make a house that has a higher uh, ceiling. And that was great because it, it cut down on the oppressive heat in a room in the summertime. Um, and as soon as you got larger windows, you started having a, a refinement in the plastering on the walls because with larger windows, you got more light. And so with more light, you could put uh, fabrics on the walls or you could put um, paintings on the walls or, or wallpaper. You could wallpaper the walls. Um, everything, uh, everything is related. Everything is dependent on, on another thing. And so we have a tendency to demark different periods in architecture. We have the colonial architecture. That's a, that's a, a crude way of saying things that happened before 1776. Um, we have federal architecture, which is things that happened between 1776 and 1820. Um, there are, those are crude ways of saying that. What we have actually is Georgian architecture, architecture that has to do with the region George. Um, and our federal architecture is actually Greek Revival. It's an early form of, of what be ultimately became Greek Revival. And you know what Greek Revival is. It's got to do with the Greek temple. Think Acropolis. And, and the Parthenon sets there with the big mambo columns. Boom, 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 boom. Right across at the gable end of the building facing you. In the case of the Acropolis, the Parthenon has this beautiful work in the tympanium. But uh, most people didn't get somebody to get up there and carve something in marble on their gable ends. But if you think about it, you drive through any old town in New England, um, actually uh, down into uh, Virginia, uh, even further south than that. Um, and, and there's a moment when houses turned from being broadside to the street to gable end to the street. And those houses, when they turned to gable end to the street, got porches in front got stairs in front, got columns in front, and a big spank spanky gable end in front. And they even lowered the pitches rather than that old timey pitch that is reminiscent of the roofs that used to have thatch on them. You had to have quite a pitch on a roof to get thatch to work. We didn't have much of a thatching tradition here in this country. In Europe, they tell us that we can't even grow good straw for thatch. Uh, but uh, we kept the pitches of the roofs. Everybody had, and so the, you could almost, for about a hundred, no, for about 200 years, you can pick out the age of a house, make a good guess at the age of a house, just simply from how steeply the roof is. By uh, Georgian houses, the roofs were pretty nearly 90 degree angle, 45 degrees, however you want to look at it. Um, carpenters refer to it in rise and run of the rafter. Um, but when we get to Greek Revival architecture, real Greek Revival architecture, the roof pitches will be down to 5 and 12 or 6 and 12. Um, it's, and, and then we get uh, some uh, later buildings, uh, some of our Italian Revival houses, where the pitches are even lower than that. Not far from approaching the 5 and 12 that today is, is considered a standard for your typical ranch house. 
So everything follows together. If you're a roofer, the, probably the divisions of time are different than if you're a window maker. Um, if you're a brick mason, the divisions of time are different once again. Uh, it's, it's got to do with, with uh, that possibly that thing that you're interested in or in sometimes it's a culmination of a bunch of new technologies that burst onto the scene with a whole new form of architecture. This is Dave, just trying to confuse you.